Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be diving into what I think it's really like to be a gaming YouTuber and whether or not I think it's worth it for you. This has been on my mind recently, mostly for myself, but I started to kind of wonder why. Why is it that I'm feeling that way and why is it that I think a lot of people ask that question? What is it that I'm looking for and what is it that's going to keep me going? So let's jump into the topic. Now to start on a more broad note, more generally speaking, before I dive into answering the question, do I think that it's worth it? I'm going to start with what I feel it's really like to be a gamer on YouTube. What I feel like I'm missing and what I enjoy about it as well as what I'm looking for along the way. Recently, I've had this overwhelming urge to jump back into one of my favorite games of all time, The Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Now, a lot of people have many, many, many playthroughs of this game, even until today, and I do as well. But I started to kind of wonder, you know, what is it that's making me want to go back to an 11, 12 year old game so bad? And I think it's probably because of the nature of gaming as it exists today. And don't worry, this is all going to tie directly back into whether or not I feel like it's worth it to be a gamer on YouTube. Now, much like any piece of art or entertainment, music, writing, when it's crafted well and delivered and executed in a quality fashion, it stands the test of time. Now, of course, there are many games that fit this bill, not just The Elder Scrolls. The Elder Scrolls just happens to be one of the most recent that captivated me, that continues to captivate me, even until this day. Now, the vast majority of games that I play are FPS competitive shooters, particularly in the battle royale genre. I work full time, so I don't always have the most time to jump into a lengthy RPG based story. But nevertheless, the same problems and opinions are as rampant, if not more so, in that particular realm of gaming. I've said it before in previous videos, and I'll say it again, I'll continue to say it. Early access gaming, in my opinion, was single-handedly one of the biggest downfalls of the gaming industry. Now, the gaming industry right now is struggling a lot in general. There have been a lot of layoffs across the gaming industry, and I don't know if it's because of executives just wanting to make as much money as possible. I don't know if it is this template worked before, so let's use it again. I really don't know what it is. It certainly can't be a lack of creativity and idea generation, but it seems like the type of game that we're getting just doesn't really have much depth to it, doesn't really have much longevity. There are bones in place that are often and good but what's wrapped around those bones doesn't really seem to go anywhere now we've made a lot of technological advancements and that has become the focus of a lot of games. But I think what made some of the games we played 10 or 15 years ago so good, or maybe even better, was the fact that, well, really all they had to focus on was the story, was the gameplay, was the mechanics of the game. Not making the textures 4K or making the explosions look as realistic as possible, but delivering a quality, well-polished product. So when it comes to what being a gamer on YouTube is really like, and whether or not I think that YouTube gaming, or gaming on YouTube rather, is worth it, I think that's really up to you to decide and what your relationship with gaming really is. For me, I love the process of creating things. I do the same thing with my podcast channel. I do the, I do the same thing with creative endeavors outside of YouTube, like writing for instance. The process of it and seeing it be birthed go from something that you just just started to something that's in full bloom is what, in my opinion, it's really about. Gaming is very difficult to succeed in on YouTube or Facebook or Twitch for that matter. It's an extremely saturated market. And I didn't start this channel with dreams of making a full-time living or really making money at all from YouTube. Now anyone that does YouTube would be lying if they said that they didn't want and hope that that happened and I certainly hope that it does for me as well. But that's not what keeps me going in gaming and that's not what I'm looking for or what I want to see in gaming, or for my channel on gaming, nor for my podcast 
text or nor for the books I write. It's to simply have something, whether that's life experience, conversation, topics at hand, or games to play, that continues to propel and motivate me through the process of wanting to create content. And that's what it has to be for you too. If you're growing a channel right now, whether it's gaming or about finance or health and fitness, ASMR, if you're not enjoying the process, then I would say take a step back and figure out what that process looks like for you and what it needs to be for it to be enjoyable for you. It's very easy to get lost in the maze, the zoo of titles telling you how to optimize your videos and thumbnails and how to make the best YouTube video for 2024 to blow up your channel. These things are all well and good and can often be packed with a lot of helpful information. But in all honesty, when the lights are off and it's rainy outside and you're wearing your robe and you're editing videos, videos and making YouTube content. That's just not how it really is. You're going through a process that's rather arduous, monotonous, and mundane at times, and not very fun. When it comes to FPS games and shooters, I really don't see myself getting more than three to four hours in a session at a time done most days. Now, if I'm creating a recording about a game for something else or creating a recording like this, then that might be a little bit different. But after the recording is done and the process of getting that recording to you begins, none of all of that flashy YouTube stuff really matters. But I enjoy it. It's fun. I like creating. I like talking. I like creating and talking in videos about gaming and podcasts. So I continue to do it. And that's what I would implore any of you out there who are thinking about starting a YouTube channel, especially in gaming, or if you're already a creator that's managed to acquire a large following. Getting stuck, slowing down, feeling like this may not be worth it, or wondering why you're even doing this is a part of the process, but it's just something you have to fall in love with because there really is no manual or rule book for this kind of thing. And realistically, very few succeed. Very few succeed to a degree that they're able to quit their job and say, I work full time doing this thing whether that's an Etsy store, a YouTube channel, a podcast, a, a book series, whatever it may be. But that shouldn't be what stops you from starting. So is it worth it? Yes, I say go. For all of my fellow gamers out there, I think I'm not alone when I say that we've all been missing something in gaming, whether that comes from the first person shooter genre, and maybe even the role playing genre as well. For me personally, the last role playing game I think I was able to get in and that I really enjoyed a lot of was probably God of War. Maybe The Last of Us 2, but I just haven't really been gripped or captivated by one in a little while. Elden Ring was good, granted that falls into more of a hardcore niche that a lot of people aren't really able to get behind. I suppose the longing for a game like Skyrim comes from reminiscing about a simpler time, well for a lot of things, but gaming for sure. When we would go to the store and we would buy a game and it might have a hundred page booklet in it that we could read on the way back home that would envelop us before we even put the game into the console. That would immerse us into the world of how to play the game and what to expect before we even booted it up. Where nowadays, you can have a game download in the background of your machine and it be ready to play by the time you get home. And there's nothing really more to it than that. The industry has definitely taken a hard shift toward delivering content as quickly as possible that looks as good as possible, uh, often at the detriment of the quality and depth of the game, the immersion of the game. Something that a lot of people who have made videos on Skyrim and perhaps the Baldur's Gate series or World of Warcraft series enjoy and long for in games, which is an expansive open world. I love playing shooters. Again, I work, I often don't have time to dive into something super deep or super expansive unless it does really captivate me. So shooters are great. They're a good time with friends and easy to blow off steam playing. But where we are now just isn't satisfying an itch for a gamer on YouTube in the way that I feel like it should. With that being said, there are a lot of amazing games on the market, and I could stand to widen my palette when it came to that kind of thing. If you feel like you're not getting what you need out of gaming, then you should probably do the same. Widen your palette and try something new. There are a lot of games coming out that I'm looking forward to as well. It's not all doom and gloom for gaming, and it's not all doom and gloom for gaming on YouTube. 
I would say that the question of whether a YouTube is worth it, whether gaming on YouTube is worth it, and what gaming as a small YouTuber is actually like, comes down to you and your processes and how you view why you're doing this in general. I would say set a realistic expectation for yourself, and I wouldn't jump into doing it with any other idea of how it's going to go other than you should be having fun learning how to be better. And if you're not enjoying it and not having fun, then you need to think about how you can transition into a place where you are because the only way to succeed if you manage to be one of the su successful few that do is to keep going and you're not going to be able to keep going unless you get a handle on those mental perspectives those emotional perspectives when it comes to the things that you're creating first now if you guys have made it to the end of this video then i really appreciate it i really enjoy everyone who has stopped by the channel who has stopped by the live streams and said hello in the chat who has subscribed who has interacted with me. It's a great feeling and it's a great thing. It's something that all YouTube creators long for. Um, but again, you have to maintain a healthy perspective. Get outside a little, refresh yourself, don't become absorbed in the screen. Don't become absorbed in the endless playlists of how to improve on YouTube. Consistency is key in many things. And knowing the why behind what you're doing is going to be far more important than any video on how to edit a thumbnail. Figure out what works for you. Figure out what you like, what you enjoy. Figure out what you long for and what you're looking forward to in gaming and how you can deliver that in such a way that's true to you and that garners the audience that you want. Gaming on YouTube is difficult, but I enjoy this. I like my little channel. I like my podcast channel. I hope to see the channel grow to get bigger month by month, year by year. And if I'm able to earn a little income from it, great. Anyone that's able to create something that other people enjoy, that other people are willing to spend time to be entertained by, should get paid for their work. And YouTube offers an incredible opportunity when it comes to that that's open to everyone. It's just going to take a lot of time and a lot of work. But the best way to get ahead is to get started. So start. Again, I thank you guys and gals very much watching the video or stopping by the channel. I play Apex, I play Call of Duty, I'll probably start another Skyrim playthrough. I'm looking forward to a lot of games that are coming out. The finals has been fun. I really enjoy shooters. I really enjoy RPGs. I think this video ultimately is a self-reflection, a diary entry if you will, of what I miss about gaming, of what I enjoy about gaming, and of what I look forward to and hope to see from gaming. The YouTube part of things is simply a byproduct of something that I already do. Some Something that I feel like I can share and that I want to share and perhaps that's the best way for all of us to look at it is if the only reason that you're doing it is to show other people or to get other people to look at you and say hey I like that good job I see you then your reasons probably aren't sound but if you're waking up every day doing this simply because it just fills you with a little bit more joy a little bit more life because you have it and you would do it whether or not the camera or the microphone was on at all then I think you're on the right path and you should keep doing it. And with that being said, I'll end the video. If you liked the video, it would be great for you to drop a like. And if you want to see more content of this style or gaming, subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one.